The more the adventures of Aang and Korra advances, the more knowledge about elemental bending changes. While I believe this is not due to the creators forgetting about their own rules, but more to do with an ever-changing universe. It's also a fun way to discover new possibilities within both series. Just like metal bending was believed to be impossible before Toph's discovery, and lightning generation was so rare it was thought to be a myth at some point, lava bending has shown its head in only a few cases. In today's video, I will explore what makes a lava bender, and how it's not quite a sub-element, but its own unique thing. Let's get going. There's a theory backed by the Avatar extras claiming that lava bending might actually not be a sub-skill of earth bending but a mixed elemental bending between fire and earth. According to the theory, elemental benders that were born of a Fire Nation parent and an Earth Kingdom parent could inherit the power to bend lava. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. After all, every bending art is inherited one way or another, with the exception of the new airbenders which were a direct result of harmonic convergence. Since an elemental bending parent does not guarantee that their child will have the ability passed down, just like with Boomy, lava benders are one of the rarest types out there. This reminds me of blood bending. While it can surely be learned while being hard to attain, we can also say it gets stronger when inherited through blood. The case of the two waterbenders No Attack, also known as Amon, and Tarlock proves this. Their father, Yakone, had the very unique ability to bloodbend without the need of the full moon. If you remember, the bloodbender Hama could only use her skill during the full moon, which gave the deadly ability some limits. In Yakone's case, it gave him the chance to attack the council during daytime, and could only be stopped by Avatar Aang. So it's safe to say special techniques can not only be learned, but be passed through generations as they evolve, getting even stronger. Since we barely know anything about the Lava Bender Gazan, he must have a similar background as Bolin, and by extension, Mako. Both boys were the children of an Earth Kingdom father and a Fire Nation mother. Unlike metal bending, which can be learned through practice, lava bending cannot be gained the same way. Even the greatest earthbenders like Toph and King Boomy never unlocked the mysterious power. It was revealed that Bolin could lava bend only when he had to save everyone from Gazan's attack. This makes it quite an unusual way of gaining an ability in the Avatar universe. It's almost as if it was inside of him all this time. He just needed a little push, or in this case, a life-threatening wave of hot lava coming his way with no way out. But if we take the inheritance theory seriously, a question arises. Were the other lava benders mixed children from the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation? In the case of Gazan, I'm pretty sure he was, and there's no theory out there which proves the opposite. Now besides Bolin and Gazan, which other lava benders have been recorded in history? I can think of three others off the top of my head. Sato, Roku, and Kyoshi. Those three characters have two things in common. First, their main element was either fire or earth. And second, they were all avatars. Which means they can bend both elements. Taking that last bit into consideration, does that mean that only fire avatars and earth avatars can lava bend? If you think about it, Aang never got the hang of it, although he had access to all these past avatars inside of him. The same applies for Korra, while she was also in close contact with Bolin. So basically, there are two ways an elemental bender can be a lava bender. The first option involves genetics, while not guaranteeing it. A Fire Nation native who has a child with an Earth Kingdom person has the chance of giving birth to a natural lava bender. The other can only happen twice in the entire four element avatar cycle, making only avatars who were either originally born as earth benders or fire benders capable of lava bending. Unlike skills that can be passed down and learned from generation to generation like metal bending, lava bending requires very strict genetic rules. This makes me wonder if Mako can lava bend. An electrified volcano eruption is surely something I would like to see. Now, you know I like to experiment with all sorts of crazy ideas when it comes to elemental bending. Just like King Boomy, I do myself indulge in some madness from time to time. And if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm totally obsessed with Republic City. The center of diversified bending is just filled with untapped potential. If I go back to the logic behind lava benders, would offsprings from other various elemental types create new or improved forms of bending? I believe so, but I might need a bit of help on that one. So don't be shy to share your ideas. I'm thinking if we mix a firebender with an airbender, we might get something like a natural smoke bender, capable of controlling smoke like no other before. A similar type of bender could see the light if a waterbender and a firebender get together. We'd have someone capable of creating mist or fog like Katara did in the Painted Lady episode, but on a much larger scale. 
Another cool combination would be water and earth, which would make clay benders, capable of creating weapons and clay figures to help them fight. The most OP power I can think of right now is if airbenders, which are getting a lot of attention these days, reproduce with earthbenders. The two elements being in total opposition would create one really useful ability, gravity bending. This could mean that these rare benders could be able to use flight naturally, but also control gravity around themselves. Having objects and people float into the air, combined with the other air bending and earth bending skills, one of those kids could be unstoppable which would make for one hell of a cool villain. One of our viewers called me writes, I prefer subatomic bending. Very Ant-Man of you, my friend. Well, I'm not sure if that was a joke or not. I take bending very seriously. Imagine what someone could do with that ability. Maybe an earthbender could change its body proportions. I'd sure love to see that happening.